Welcome to your Numar 2025 Mountaineer on a Spartan chassis. This is a floor plan model 4118. So we're going to do a walkthrough starting at the cockpit area here and surrounding all the dash and the complete coach so you understand how it works and how to make it operate. So in our driver's cockpit area, our first control on the left hand side is our HWH leveling pad touch controller. Okay, so the first control pad that you see here on the left side of the driver's console is your HWH leveling control. And to power this leveling control up, you just reach over and turn the ignition on or turn it to accessories and you'll see you get additional uh, lights that come on here that indicate we're slightly off level. And to level the coach, um, you can do it manually by pressing these buttons for extend and retract, or you can just hit the auto level button. Now, before you put your coach uh, into auto level or um, you do it manually, you're going to want to walk around the coach and just make sure that there's nothing underneath where the jack uh, uh, pads are going to be extending towards the ground. And you also want to check the reveals on your slide out. Make sure that your slide out reveals are about an eighth inch. Or excuse me, make sure that your slide out reveals are three eighths of an inch. And then you'll be able to go into auto level after you've run your slide rooms out. So leveling should only take place after you've checked your reveals and made sure that you can run your slide rooms out after the slide rooms are out, then you'd wanna go into the leveling process. So to do that, you'll turn the key on, hit auto level, and what you're hearing is the air going out of the bags as the coach is going into the leveling process. It takes a minute or two uh, to go through the complete leveling cycle. And once each jack is down, you'll see a red light that comes on to tell you that that jack in that corner is down. So you can see the coach is slightly moving as the jacks are going down. If the area that you're on has too much of a slope, then the excess slope light would come on and then you'd have to move your coach to a more level position, but we're good here because the excess slope light is not on. If at any time during this process you want the jacks to um, store and go back up, you would just hit auto store. But now you can see all of our jacks are down and our yellow lights are off, the showing, up, showing us that we're in a level position. So now we can turn off the ignition. And what you were hearing there was a, a warning signal that the ignition was on. Uh, while it was in the leveling process because the air wasn't in the airbags anymore. So now we're level and we'll do the exact reverse process for auto store that we did when we ran our slides out. So to go into auto store and bring the jacks up, we turn the key on, let the coach air up, run the slide rooms in, and then after the slides were in, then we would go into auto store. So we'll show you that. Turn the key on. After the coach is aired up, then you would go into auto store.
as each jack retracts in the corner of your coach, when it's fully retracted, the light will go out. So before you travel, you want to make sure all your red lights are out. All right, so your last jack is up. The jack warning sound has gone away. And once you have full air in your airbags, you'll be able to travel. So uh, right now um, it's showing that we have auto stored. Again, if you at any time wanted to, you could extend or retract these manually. Uh, but it's just about as easy to use the auto level and then auto store button to level. In front of our HWH leveling control, we have our Allison shift control. Uh, the shift control is going to put your coach in drive or reverse or neutral. And obviously we want to have it in neutral when we set our parking brake. So if we turn the ignition on in the coach, uh, this will light up and this will say the gear that we're in. So this, this little window in the front here will always tell you uh, which gear, whether it's reverse, first, second, or third, fourth gear, whatever gears here it will display. You can also refer to your owner's manual for more information on the modes and, and oil level checks and temp. Uh, will also be displayed here if you use your mode button. Just And we'll go through uh, these settings in just a little bit when we uh, start the coach or put it in gear and when we demonstrate the parking brake. But going forward in front of that, we have the tag dump, uh, auto and then disable and manual. Uh, what this uh, rocker switch does is it releases the air in the tag axle so in case you wanted to turn a sharp corner in reverse um, then the air uh, would be out of the tag axle and you could make a sharper uh, corner going in reverse for instance in addition to manually dumping the tag axle it will automatically dump if you leave it in the auto mode. Just to the right of the tag for dump, you have your engine brake. Your engine brake is an assist feature for your braking so that when you release your accelerator pedal, if this is engaged, you'll be able to adjust the amount of braking that your exhaust is giving through your engine. So if you're uh, in the mountains and you're going down steep uh, inclines, you would typically turn this on and set this uh, to low, medium, or high, and that will help you save your brakes uh, because it's using the engine exhaust to help you uh, slow down. If you don't want the engine brake on, and you're just driving at slow speeds and there's no inclines, then you might want to choose to leave that off. Moving up here, you see your parking brake. Your parking brake is pull to apply or push to release. So whenever I'm parked and my shifter is in neutral, I need to pull this towards me to set my parking brake. When I'm ready to drive again, push this forward and then put it in drive or reverse, whichever direction I'm going to be going. Just to the right of that, I have my mirror adjust. The mirrors uh, for the left and right side in the front. If I want to adjust the left mirror, turn the toggle switch to the left and then make my adjustments left, right, up or down. And then over to the passenger side mirror, I can do the same adjustments when I'm finished. I want to leave that in the center. So in case if anyone touches those again, 
uh, no adjustments are made after I set the mirrors where I want. Just below the parking brake is a charging pad for your phone. Just to the right of the mirror adjustment is a switch that we can turn on or off for our heated mirror that will melt frost or remove fog on your mirror if you leave that on for a few minutes. Obviously, if there's no uh, fog or any frost, we can leave that off. So if we want the uh, automatic dimmer switch to be on for our headlights, um, that's down here. This is automatic lights on, so if we leave that on and this is off, this automatically will turn the headlights on when it's dark enough. In addition to that, if we want the dimmer, the headlights to be on high or low beam, we can turn these on auto high beams and they'll automatically switch to high beam so we don't have to do it manually here. If we want to cancel it, we push it down, resume is automatic high beams. This one is the dome light for above us. If we just want to uh, dim the lights here in the cockpit and on the switches, we can go dimmer. You can see the lights are going a little dimmer or brighter. Just below that set of controls is your automatic traction control override. If I turn this on, that will cause the traction control light to flash here on the glass dash. As long as the ATC is turned on for the automatic traction control, that light or that LED will flash. If I turn it off, then it will disappear. This is your front window for the driver. And this is my air horn. If I turn the air horn on, then the horn will be uh, air. If I turn it back off, then it will just be the street horn. There's your louver for your air uh, heating or cooling here. And this is your Curtis brake control. Um, you can set this uh, to different settings and uh, that will adjust the amount of brake that your trailer is that you're towing. You can see here I'm, I can change the colors, um, but as they go over, uh, I'm increasing the braking, and as I go back, I'm decreasing the braking on the trailer. On the left side of the column here, I have the turn signal control and whenever I have the left turn signal on it shows the left camera right turn signal is going to show my right camera the cruise control is also on the left hand or right hand signal just by uh, turning it on and off here to set it I can turn it on and then I set it here and then for bright or dim lights manually uh, the indicators here I can uh, dim or make my headlights bright. There is an additional hazard switch right here. If I pull this out, you can see my hazard lights come on. To cancel the hazard lights, just pull down or push forward on the lever and that cancels them out. On the floor, near the floor, there's another pedal here, a small pedal. If I press that pedal, then I can release my wheel and I make any adjustments for up and down uh, to tilt the wheel while I'm driving or to get out of the seat. It also telescopes the wheel in, out. And then once you release the pedal, it stays in that position. On the steering wheel itself, there's three clusters. These three clusters uh, give you fingertip control for the wiper wash, wiper on and intermittent, high and low. If we're, if we're done with the wipers, we just press the off button. 
or we can make telephone calls here through our radio core if we have our phone on connected to Bluetooth or USB. If we're going to use the intermittent function, however long you take after you press and turn it on, to press it again is how long the intermittent will happen. When I'm done with the wipers, I obviously just turn them off. In the center of the console, you can see that I can uh, select uh, my radio, my source here on the screen for Bluetooth, HDMI, any of my menu selections for my radio. I can just do it uh, with my fingertips here. I don't have to go down here and touch it on the radio panel itself. Um, I can mute the volume here uh, for the speakers, or I can turn the volume up or down, or I can uh, go forward or back on my uh, selection of music. The headlight flash is here if I need to flash my headlights. I can flash my marker lights here. You can see they flash. The cluster on the right is my home screen menu. Um, I can go back and I can look at uh, any selection I make here. I can then scroll with the arrows up or down. And once I scroll to whichever one I want to make an adjustment to, I click on the OK. And I can see if there are any messages. Uh, I can scroll up or down in those settings. When I want to move on to the next setting, I can just click on the home, home button again, and then I can go up or down. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to see what my tire pressure was, which is your TPMS. Then that's going to display here. If I press OK, then I can see what the inside and outside tires are. Um, pressures on all all of my tires. So this is your menu. You can scroll up and down. Once you get into that particular uh, selection, just press the OK, and then you can make your adjustments uh, to that uh, setting. On the left side of the glass dash, you've got your fuel indicator, your engine temp indicator, your oil pressure indicator, your lane mitigation warning, which is used with the mobile eye that's mounted on the windshield. You've got your air pressure indicators for your front and rear of the coach. You want to make sure that your coach is aired up before you drive or before you run your slide rooms in and out. And this is your DEF indicator which is showing full at the time. This is the time of day on the far right. Uh, this is your RPM. Uh, this gives you more data on your trip information, distance to empty. This is our um, uh, miles per hour. We can change the miles per hour setting to kilometers. Um, here if we go into our settings uh, on our glass dash. When we make a selection to our gear shift here on the Allison, uh, we're going to be able to see if we're in reverse, neutral, or drive. We're in neutral now. It's showing neutral. Our collision mitigation system will come on and display once we're in gear and in motion. And of course, this is our uh, park indicator here. If our parking brake is set, we're always going to see the P. If it's released, the P won't be showing. We're in park now. One thing that we see on the right side of the cluster here is the effort minus or plus. You can see it moving of the power steering. The comfort steer is what it's called. I can change those settings to easier or more firm uh, for the steering wheel motion, uh, whichever I like. And then the one just below that is for my pedals. 
if I want to bring my pedals towards me, push the um, lever towards me. If I want to make the pedals further away, then I push that away from me and the pedals will go further away from my seat. So moving over here to the radio and the cameras, you can see uh, they're on right now. This is how it would look if they were off. You'll just see the splash screen. To turn it on, just press and release. Takes a second for it to come on. So on the left side here are your radio uh, core selections, and you can see those with the menu. On the right side here is your camera. So on the menu, you can see here there's navigation and camera. So if I ever want to just make selections for my camera, I can just hit the camera button here, and you can see I can select any one of these views front, rear, or any one of the sides. In addition to the one in the rear, there's a further expanded view or closer up view, but the one in the center is the one that you would typically leave it on for driving. So just beside the trailer cam view, you've got your 360 degree cameras on both sides or um, all, all, the, all four cameras. Uh, if you had a camera, if you had your trailer hooked up, then you could have these two selections, which we don't have right now. And then, of course, these are your other two selections. And the bottom one is the 360 degree view all the way around your coach with all the cameras. Uh, showing a complete picture of what's around surrounding your coach. Going back to the menu, you can select any one of these in the menu. Sirius, Bluetooth, HDMI, auxiliary, our setup, mobile eye, which is for our lane mitigation. Our navigation is also here, so if you wanted a shortcut to your navigation, you don't have to go through the menu. You can just hit it here. Whenever you select navigation, you'll have to click on Accept. And once you do that, then you'll be able to go in and choose a route, a multi-point route. If I choose a new route, I'll be able to enter the address. Uh, that I want to go to or a zip code and the street and then that will display my trip. Bluetooth gives me the option of connecting my phone or iPod or other devices to my radio core for music for instance I can press my phone and then I can pair a device uh, that I'd like to go with the radio for music or for making telephone calls uh, with this button up here. There is obviously the camera control here, but there's also that camera control here. So the shortcut to get to the cameras is always right here. But if you're in the menu and you want to go to the camera control, then you just do it here and you're at the same place. Um, the mobile eye um, gives you lane change warnings um, when you're traveling. Uh, you have to be in gear for this to work. Uh, the mobile eye is mounted on the front of the coach, and we'll show you that in another uh, section of this video. And, of course, you have your setup screen, and this is where you would go uh, to set your um, your, any of your settings up, auto connects, uh, auto volumes. The house mode 
will need to be turned on if you want to hear what's playing on the radio in the entertainment center outside. So just remember that whatever you're playing on the radio here, if you want to hear that music outside or on the outside speakers, you have to turn it on house mode. If you have house mode off, you won't hear anything outside. Okay, looking at the selection of controls just below the radio and camera, you've got your house to chassis battery boost. Uh, this is a button that you might need to use if either set of your batteries is low. Let's say, for instance, our chassis batteries were low and we couldn't start our engine. We could press this button down and hold it for 60 seconds that will boost the house batteries into the chassis batteries and help you start your engine. Same with chassis to house. You can boost the house batteries with the chassis by holding it the opposite way. You can hear the fans in the front here are on, but we can switch to off or low. That's the heat coming down below here um, for the cab. So if you have your ITR Oasis turned on, you can turn this front fan on high or low, and that will give you heat in the cockpit area of the coach. In addition to that heat, there's overhead fans that you could use to circulate the air around the windshield area. The overhead fans switch is on or off here but you also can select high medium or low fan speeds for the overhead fans those are used a lot of times in conjunction with uh, anytime you need to defrost the coach if you're having this knob selecting over for defrost you'll often turn your overhead fans on to help that defrost process There are dock, this is a docking light switch here on and off, courtesy light switch on and off, and our generator on off button. If we press and hold the generator towards the gen start side, it preheats and starts. Once it starts, it, the flashing light goes out, meaning that your engine is, your generator engine is running. When we're done with the generator and we want to turn it off, we just press and hold that down and that turns it off. To unlock the entrance door, we just or, uh, lock and unlock is here. We have our visor and shade controls for the cockpit area here. This is our visor. You can hear it going up and down on our driver window we have another visor here for the front windshield this is our shade for the front windshield and our visor on the passenger side for the shade or the visor on the front windshield if the key is turned on they'll only come down halfway. And if they're down all the way, you'll only be able to move them up. That's a safety feature that Numar builds in so that you can't lower the shade more than halfway while you're driving. So these are your HVAC controls just for the cockpit area. In order for these to turn on initially, you have to set it to at least a number one or two or any one of the fan settings. Then you can turn your air conditioning on with the snowflake button, recirculation or non-recirculation button with the arrows that rotate here, and then of course your warm and cool selections along with which direction you want that air to be uh, pointed to. This is defrost all the way to the right and any one of the mix selectors um, on the other ones. So on the 
passenger side, we have a buddy screen that mirrors what you'll see on the driver's screen. Just power it up, and then you can select navigation or camera here. If you select the source button, you can scroll through navigation, auxiliary, HDMI, or you can pair a device here, like with Bluetooth, like your phone or iPad. You can change your settings here, and uh, you have your up and down arrows uh, when you change those settings. In addition to the buddy screen, uh, you have additional patio light controls, uh, visor controls for your uh, visor here. You have your step cover, and we'll show you that in just a second. You have your ceiling lights on and off control for all your ceiling lights when you enter the coach. And then you have your map lights here. So we're going to do a quick demonstration of the step cover. The step cover is right here where I'm standing. If we want to extend the step so that I can stand in the step well area, all you have to do is press the step cover. It will come out and raise up so that now I can stand here without being on the steps below. When you're done using the step cover, just get move away from it and we can retract it. It goes down and back in and it shuts off automatically and you can release the button. So in addition um, to the controls that are here at the passenger side, when you enter the coach, these, bu these two buttons are a little bit lower so that you can reach in right away and turn on your battery disconnect here. When the battery disconnect is on, it's red, showing red. Um, when your battery disconnect is on, obviously you can turn on your, all your functions inside your coach, including your lights. This shows a baggage door lock and unlock, so you can unlock your baggage doors from here. So just below our battery disconnect and our baggage lock and unlock, is the HWH reset switch. If your HWH system isn't coming on or working correctly, press and hold that for five seconds. It will reset the entire HWH system, then release. Just to the back of this area, there's an additional charging port here, 12 volt charging port. And above here, there is a telephone cordless charger. Just set your phone here and it will charge up. Just above the driver's seat, you have an additional compartment here with more controls. These controls uh, will operate everything from your antenna to your slide room. And we'll just go over these real quick. What you see here is your router for your Wi-Fi. Your Wi-Fi router is called the Wi-Fi Ranger. Just to the right of that is an additional plug here with the satellite prep. So you can put your satellite receiver here, plug it in, and then you'll have your prep uh, wires coming through here to plug into your receiver. For operating your television, this is your television antenna. Your television antenna just turns on here and it's a powered antenna so it receives stronger signal. Uh, to search for channels, you just Press the search and then it displays how many channels it finds. You can make small adjustments right or left to that antenna here. You can go left, right, but whenever it's scanning, uh, it, you'll see the uh, LED going in a circle here for the scan. As long as this is turned on and the LED lights are lit up, you will only be able to receive uh, over the air television, you won't be able to receive cable. So if you have part cable you want to watch, turn this one off. The control just beside that is your Girard awnings. Your Girard awnings can be controlled from the inside of the coach here, or you can take the remote control and go outside and control it outside. Moving across these switches here, uh, you want to be sure the, the 
warning here is be sure that both the driver's and the passenger seat are in the forward position before you activate a slide room. So these are your slide room switches here and here, but make sure that your driver and passenger seat are forward because the slide room can hit the seat and then bend the base or the chair. The driver's side slide out is this one. To move it in or out, you have to press and hold that button in, and you'll hear the pump motor if you have HWH, and then out, same way, and you hold it down until the motor quits running, and it shuts off automatically. But you have to hold your finger down on either one. The exterior LED switch is here. Exterior step switch to override the step and keep it out is here. You can override your step switch. The Wi-Fi router power going to that Wi-Fi receiver is here. And then moving across on the bottom here is you have your uh, driver's side window awning and your passenger window awning. So if I want to open or close my window awnings, they're here. My security lights are here for the driver and passenger side on and off. The driver's privacy drape is here, up and down. The front is here for the front windshield. The door privacy drape is here for the door. And then the passenger side is to my right. These two uh, switches uh, are for uh, the lithium battery, BMS, the battery management system. If for some reason there's no LED light here around this switch, that would indicate your batteries are off. So to turn them back on, you would want to press this button in and that LED would illuminate and your batteries would be on. Keep in mind though that this will go out when you have a 10% level in your lithium batteries. So if you do turn this back on, you have to plug your coach in or turn your generator on because you're using your last 10% of power out of your lithium battery system. So again, if you have to turn this on and it was already running all day and it went out, and you don't have your generator running or AGS, automatic generator start turned on, or you're not plugged into power, you're draining your batteries, and this goes out and you have to turn it back on to get power in the house. Don't forget, you have to charge those batteries with your generator or plug your shore cord in. This is just an access for a tool that we use to diagnose the coach. You shouldn't have to get into that, but that's what that's for. It's for diagnostics of your RVC CAN bus system. For your driver and passenger seat, these are your adjustments. They're electric motor adjustments. Starting on this side is your heat adjustments, which will heat your seat and your back. This adjustment is for your seat back moving forward and back. This is your lumbar support, which you can't see, but you'll be able to feel it when you go more or less. And for your foot rest here in the front, your foot rest will move out or back. The actual entire seat will move forward and back here or tilt. And your driver's seat is the same way with the same controls. If you need to rotate the entire seat towards the living room area, there's a lever on the right hand side as you're sitting in the seat. If I sit in the seat and I reach that lever and I pull it up, it unlocks so that I can rotate the seat as long as the seat back is forward enough. And then I'll be able to turn my entire seat all the way around. My buddy camera's out of the way. I can rotate my seat. 
and be in the living room area here. This is the lever that you have to release. You can see this switch on the right hand side moves the headrest up and down. And when I'm done with the seat in this position, as I rotate it around and back straight towards the front, it will lock back into position. And you'll hear it click and lock. So the controls for the driver's seat are all the same as the ones we just covered in the passenger seat, starting in the back with the, the seat heat. The only difference is the footrest will operate now, but when the ignition is turned on, then it will not extend. That's just to protect you when you're driving in case someone bumps that switch, it won't push out and uh, get in the way of your legs and controlling the coach. There is an adjustment that you can make on the armrest. If you'd like to make it set a little bit lower or higher, in the center, there's a switch. You can hear it. As I push up, it releases, and then that sets in the place once I release. So if I want to set it lower, pull up, go down, and now it's set in that position. If I want to move it all the way out of the way, just lift up, and it's out of the way. Your first touch panel control when you come into the coach operates lighting, shades, fans, or systems along with the monitor panel and display brightness. You can turn all of your lights on here or off, but the toggle switch here, as you come in the entrance door, you can turn it on there right when you come in. So if I, if I go to the brightness, I can turn the brightness or set it to dimmer here. I can go to the home screen, and if I don't understand how to set, for instance, the shades, I can press the I button for information, and then the shades, and then I can see the instructions on how to operate my shades. And I can do that with any of the functions. When I press the home screen, if I don't understand how to turn the lighting on or off or any of these system monitor panel. I just press that, like for instance, the fan, and it'll show all the fans. Monitor panel, information, monitor panel. This is showing the monitor panels. The home screen always goes back to the home screen. I just did. Uh -huh. So if you want to turn your display brightness all the way down, you can do that here. Another feature for this screen, if the, if, if the screen ever acts up or when you go into the settings, for instance, for lighting display, if this isn't working, you can actually touch and hold the screen for 18 seconds. If you do that, as I count to 18, you'll notice that a red X will come up on the screen. Then you can reset your panel just by pressing these red X's until they all disappear. That resets your panel. It's an easy way to reset it if it starts acting up. Below the lighting panel and control panel, we have another 120 volt outlet. Moving over into the couch and television area, we have another lighting control panel here that's local for these lights. It's handy because having the panel here will be able, you'll be able to go into uh, the settings and you can operate the TV lift or the lights as you're sitting down in the couch. So if I wanted to operate my TV lift, I would go into systems and I have water pump, TV lift, 
TV lift down. So if I want to bring the TV lift up, I just press the TV lift up. And you'll notice when it came on, it turned red. If I press it again, it goes gray and it turns off. So with our television turned on, um, we'll, we'll use our remote control to go to the home screen, press the home button in the center that gets to this screen. And then this icon here is our selection for menu. So just uh, toggle over to the left here and go to settings. So you'd have to scroll down to settings then press the center button here and now scroll over to all settings and what we're going to do is we're going to scan for channels if we scroll down here to broadcasting then we select that press the center button again and we go through auto program to find the channels. So press auto program. And we want to press the start to auto program. We have to have our over the air um, wine guard uh, turned on. And once that's on, then we're going to scan for air channels. Yes. And it'll go through the scan and it'll show us how many channels it found. Thirty nine channels, so we can either scan again or we can go to our different settings or just close. You'll have to scan the same way uh, with the WineGuard antenna off if you want to watch the cable channels. So if you want to scan for cable, turn the over the air antenna off and then scan again for your cable channels if you have part cable available and want to watch cable. Now we should be able to connect with a channel here. Yes. To go back to the home screen and scan for cable, scroll left, back to settings, to the right, all settings, broadcasting, auto program, and this time we want to, we're plugged in the cable, we've turned our over the air uh, wine guard off, and now we can scan for the cable channels. Obviously since we are not plugged in the cable, we won't pick up any, but that's how you would scan for the cable and you'll have to scan for channels for each TV location, whether it's out here or in the bedroom. Just above the television, we have cabinet space here, our Bose speaker for the sound system to watch the television. We have our audio visual cabinet. The audio visual cabinet is where you would set your receivers for your satellite or DVD players. The satellite source connection is here for your HDMI or your Blu-ray DVD. The 120 volt outlets for that are obviously in the back. More storage space here. This fold this this sofa folds out into a bed. So if I wanted to do that, I just remove the pillow. So to bring the sofa bed out, 
you'll have to reach down and find the black strap it has a small loop on it then we can release you can hear it unlock once i release it then i'll be able to lift up in the front and pull up and out and fold the seat back down and then you've got your sleeper the reverse of that to put it back together and stow it away As we move over into the kitchen area, we have our drawer space here. You'll notice in the drawer, you've got an additional router because this coach came with Starlink and it comes with an extra router. You won't actually need this uh, because you have your Wi-Fi Ranger hooked up to uh, your for your Wi-Fi router and your coach, but this is a, an extra one that you have. More drawer space. There's a button at the top of these three drawers. If you press it, it's going to release and then it's going to come out to give you extra space in the kitchen for food preparation or whatever you need here. There's, of course, storage space here and in these cabinets. There's a pull-out drawer here. There's an additional plug that you can unplug the microwave just inside here. So if you would need to remove power from the microwave or remove that, you can unplug the microwave there. Just refer to your owner's operator's manual for your operating instructions. For your microwave, it has a dual lock where the latching door is, there's two latches here and here. Inside the drawer, just under the cooktop, you've got all your television controls and other accessories. And we'll go over some of these as we go to other areas of the coach. You have your touch-up paint here for different colors of your coach. There's an energy guide label uh, that came off of your dishwasher right below. And of course, all your remote controls are in this drawer. This is the remote control for the Bose speaker just above the AV audio visual cabinet. This is for your air mattress. your Samsung and your sofa baton. For your Girard awning and information on that, it's contained in this USB. USB. So to close your drawers, just push in firmly and you'll hear it lock into place. You can check it, but it's good. This is your Fisher Paykel dishwasher. Your dishwasher is a 120 volt appliance and it requires that either your coach be plugged in to shore power or your generator on to operate. When your dishwasher is turned on, you can open and close the door. When it's turned off, then you'll then you'll be in the lock position you won't be able to open it if you want to lock the keypad you just press that button now the keypads are locked to unlock the keypad press it again press and hold it again to unlock the keypad the red light goes out and now i can turn it off and it's locked into position for travel just refer to your owner's manual for more information on those controls. At the top center, just below your microwave, is your cooktop. 
on the back side of the covers, you have a cutting board. So you can use your cutting board if you like. There's two of them. This is a true induction cooktop, so only pans that are magnetic will work. If I turn any of the controls on, they will automatically go out unless there's a pan there and, I'm, and I choose a setting. If I'd like to remove this and take it outside, I can do that. I can just grab a hold of it, lift up, and I'd need to unplug it to take it outside. To stow it, just plug it back in, set it back in place, and I'm ready to use back in the coach. When the cooktop is cool and we're ready to put our covers back on, the rounded corner goes to the outside or the handle to the outside. There's a cover on each side for the sink as well. And these stow down below here. need to push these all the way back into the holder so they lock kind of into place. This is telescoping and adjustable. On and off, cold and hot. This is your trash drawer and more storage here. You may notice that we have the heat turned on and there's a fan behind here that blows the heat out here. There's more storage here and here. There's a touch panel here in the kitchen for your lighting in this area, as well as any of the other controls that you have for shades, fans, or system. If I wanted to turn on the water pump here, since I'm working with the sink area, I can turn the water pump on right here or off. If I wanted to turn the overhead fan, which is here, if I'm cooking, I can just turn that fan selector on here and choose kitchen, master bath, or stool room. And I can turn the fan on right here and it, goes to high, I can set this to medium or low. In addition to that fan coming on, if the, if the outside sensor senses that there's any moisture outside, it may not open and come on. If it's not raining, and you're not worried about rain coming in, you can override with pressing the rain sensor, excuse me, you can override it by pressing the rain sensor button here and then it will automatically open and continue to run even if it's raining or there's moisture on the sensor. When I'm finished with the fan, I can just press the off again, fan closes and turns off. In addition to the touch panel for operation, if I wanted to open it manually, I could by removing the louver I can actually open this fan manually right here. You see it opens here and then I can close here. This just clips back in place. And that locks into place. At the center of the ceiling, in the living room area, kitchen area, and in the bedroom, 
these panels swing down and that gives you access to the filters for the air conditioning and heat pump system. So when I open this up, I can see that these are the discharge areas where the air comes out, but these are the louvers that I need to remove and pull out. And then I need to take these filters and clean them. The more that I use my HVAC system for the roof air conditioners, the more often I need to clean these. You can actually uh, look at them and you can tell when they need to be cleaned. Just take them off the louver, blow them out with compressed air, and then wash them with soapy warm water and let them air dry. Then you can put them back and then just reinsert. And you need to do that to all of these in the locations forward, center, and in the bedroom. Magnets front and back hold it up in place. All you have to do is push up and the magnets will hold it in place. So in the living room area, you've got your theater seating. The theater seating is electric operated. The controls for the seat are here on your cup holder. You'll see an icon of a seat. The icon of the seat shows the adjustments along with the icon of the lighting. So you can turn your lighting on and off. If we press our icon for the seat to open, it will open. My footrest comes out. If I press the icon for close, it'll close. I also have a USB plug here for charging. If I'd like to use that or I can close it. And of course the light switch is here. In the center, there's additional storage space with the drawer. Just to my left, I have another touch panel. This touch panel controls the lighting in this area. In addition to the, all the overhead lights, reading lights and wall lights and has the same functions for shades, fans, uh, in other areas of the coach. Just above the theater seating, I have storage space here. Another lighting panel. So if I wanted to turn the lights on in this area, ceiling lights, Reading lights on, dinette lights on. There's additional storage above the dinette. And below the dinette seating, there's more storage space underneath the seat. If I grab a hold, I can pull these out. Storage on the, is the same on the other side. You'll notice here is your kit. This kit comes with every coach in this carry case. It shows all of your plumbing, heating, exterior, electrical, and appliances paperwork. So all the warranty information, warranty registration paperwork, operator's guides, not only for the appliances, but the operating guides for your inverters, any appliances along with the operating instructions of your coach are all in here. So make sure you take those paperwork out and register all of your appliances and get the um, warranty started. Moving back to the refrigerator, you notice there is a lock in the middle of all three doors. This lock does not come with the refrigerator. Numar adds it so that when it's in the lock position and you're traveling, <clears throat> this travel lock will not allow these doors 
to come open. If you want to unlock, move to the right. Now I can open all of my doors. You notice here on the control pad, when the refrigerator's off, you'll get the red warning cooling off and nothing's going to operate. To turn the refrigerator on and set it up, just press and hold the two outside buttons here and the refrigerator comes on. The little snowflakes here that you see show the temperature settings and I can make those freezer temps go up or down just by pressing. That's warmer. The more snowflakes you have, that's cooler. So I can set my temperature in the refrigerator the same way. There's a fast cool light and your water filter um, indication will um, give you more information on if you, re if you change it, then you'll need to hold this for three seconds to reset when you change that filter. Inside your refrigerator, you'll see the water filter is not installed yet. You install the water filter here. You lift up this. Then you just insert, push that back down. There's an air filter. The air filter's here. You just remove this and install your filter. Additional information is on the placard on the left, model and serial number information. In the freezer compartment, you've got your ice tray. And to turn off the ice maker, there's a bail arm on the ice maker. You just lift the bail arm up to turn the ice maker off. Before you travel, you'll need to lock your refrigerator. Lock is to the left. Now your doors are locked for travel. Beside the refrigerator, you have your pantry. The pantry drawers are all locked. They're push to unlock. So if you pull on them, they won't open. You have to push and then they unlock. And they're all the same that way. When you close the door, the magnets will hold it in place and the lights will go out. With your coach, you have your inner vac accessory bag and inside the bag are all the accessories. So you can attach that at this location here. And inside you'll find your, your hose end and your handle where you attach your accessories. So to get started, you just plug it in. And then all you need to do to turn it on and off is just press this button here. If you need help or instructions on how to change the battery in here or how to operate the device, just scan the QR code and you'll get more information online how to use the complete system. If you're going to use the InterVac manually, you can sweep uh, any material here and then just lift this up and you can sweep it in here. When you're done, you just pull the hose out and store it away. But be careful that when you store the hose back in the bag that you don't leave uh, something that might press up against here that would turn it on. Above your inner vac, you've got your climate sensor for zone two. This senses the temperature for whether you're in heating or cooling for your HVAC system in this zone. Above that, you have your touch panel control for your silver leaf here. Located in the mid area of your coach is the silver leaf touch panel. And this screen will allow you to control the functions in your coach. So we have those functions labeled on the outside perimeter. And then when you choose one of the outside selections, it appears in the center of the screen. So starting at the top left is the dimmer. So you can turn 
uh, the screen a little bit dimmer if it's later in the evening um, or brighter, whichever you choose. Uh, at the very top, it gives you the date and the temperature. And there's a gear icon. We'll get to that a little bit later. But at the home screen, the home screen is going to display in the center uh, what your tank levels are, what your battery is, uh, whether the uh, batteries are bridged together and char helping each other charge. It also shows our gen set, leg one and two, and our shore power. So as you can see, we're not plugged into shore power. Um, our house batteries are at 85% state of charge. Our chassis battery is at 13.2, and our tanks are all empty. And that's pretty much the way, whenever we make a selection, it's just going to show in the AC power selection. We don't have power on leg one or two. Our inverters are off because we're not plugged in and they're not working. So scrolling on down to DC power, we've got uh, DC means direct current. Direct current comes from our batteries. Our batteries are showing that they're 85% charged and we have 13.1 volts. These batteries are lithium. Lithium batteries always stay at about 13 volts. Uh, unlike what you were seeing uh, before, um, our chassis batteries are a uh, AGM type battery, so they show a voltage where the house batteries will show a percentage of overall state of charge. Moving on to our generator, we've got our manual start, manual stop. So if we need to turn our generator on, we can do that here. And it also shows uh, whether those are locked out. It shows activity flags uh, and you know anything that's on will be circled in blue. For your generator we can go to our ags settings we can turn our ags on it's disabled so one of the things you want to be sure to do if you turn your ags on is enable it so that the generator can come on when the batteries fall below 30 percent state of charge that's something key to remember in your water if you select your water uh, button you're going to show all of the items that relate to your fresh tank or your other tanks. Water pump on and off switch. We can turn our water pump on and off from here or the autofill. If we move to our climate, that relates to all the temperature settings, whether our um, heat or cool is turned on or off. We have to make those selections here. Um, it shows all zones uh, here, meaning living room, bath, and bed. So we can select cool, auto, or heat. Auto is just a, an automatic setting where you choose a temperature you want, and it will select between the cooling and the heat, whether that's the heat pump or the air conditioning. So if you select heat, you're going to have to turn the Oasis on. The Oasis is your hydronic heater for your water heat and your air heat. So you need to turn your burner on here or off here. And you can also select the electric elements, which give you some uh, hot water and some heat, but not uh, a lot for the heat. It does, it does heat all your water. But if you're selecting the elements and you're going to take a long hot shower or you need a lot of heat because it's a really cold day, you want to make sure your burner is turned on. We can select individual zones or we can select the entire coach by pressing all when we're in the climate mode. So refer to your owner's manual for more information, but when any one of those cooling or heating functions come on, you're going to see that icon is highlighted with an LED, like we have the heat on now, so it's highlighted in blue. That's our ITR Oasis burner. It's going right now. If we were running our air conditioner, you'd see the snowflake highlighted.
highlighted. We have a block heater that preheats your engine on cold mornings. Turn that on or off. So when we turn on our block heater here, it turns on the outlet for the block heater, which is plugged in manually. So we wanna make sure our block heater is plugged in and turned on if we want preheat for our engine. Our battery's state uh, shows here that it's uh, currently at 13.2 volts and it gives you more detailed information on uh, what temperature and how what the temperature is in the bay. So this is a much more detailed information. How many amp hours remain? If we select the coach mode, it helps us uh, more quickly go and set or preset settings that you would normally have to maybe select manually. So if we're camping um, and we're outdoor unplugged, outdoor plugged in, you can then choose, it's, let's say you're outdoors and you're plugged in, <clears throat> it shows you that uh, that selection will enable your chargers and will en en enable your um, hydronic heat, which is your OASIS. So just remember that if you're going to make a selection here, it's going to display what's going to be turned on over here. And then you have to activate that function. So whichever one I choose, I need to activate in order to turn those items on. Moving over to my floor heat, that's just the heat that comes off of the floor. We can turn those on here, or we can do it like this and turn them on to number 10. These are not temperature settings. They're just numbers. The higher the number, the longer the pattern that they're on. To turn them off, we just go here or just down. So you're not really setting a temperature, you're just setting uh, the lower settings are just a few bars. It's gonna be a lower heat setting. Uh, the more bars you put, the warmer the floor is gonna be in the rear of the coach, front or mid. For the ventilation fans, those are your fantastic roof vent fans that pulls air out of the coach, kitchen, master bath, or stool room. We can turn them on or off. So now we can go to high, medium, or low for the kitchen uh, or the master bath, whichever we select, we can then choose that to be on or off. There is one additional uh, function. If the fan, if you turn it on, but it doesn't come on, there may be moisture on the rain sensor. You can override that by pressing the rain sensor override. So anytime that you want to override uh, the fan and make it come on in case the rain sensor uh, won't allow it to come on. You can hit the rain sensor override and the fan will come on and stay on. The door locks, you can uh, toggle them on and off for the entry door or the cargo doors. The shades and TV lift can be controlled here, TV up, down, bed, bath, or living room, kitchen. You can select any one of those, and then you can go in and uh, turn those on. Shades lift. And of course we can control all of our lightings in the bedroom, half bath, living room. We can turn them all on and off here, or we can dim them however much we want to be bright or dim. And then the final icon is the gear icon. And the gear icon gives you selections for setting the clock, auto gen start settings, lithium battery statuses, climate options, and more. Floor heat scheduling, auto fill configurations, network diagnostics, shows errors or things that may not have worked. In our Next page is monitor diagnostics. If there was a monitor issue, we can see that here. We can customize our monitor if we like and miscellaneous settings 
On the last pages, we can view the clock, uh, test the touch screen. And that covers, uh, in general, the operation of these functions, but there is more detailed information in your owner's manual when we recommend that you go through and read uh, those in more detail. Moving into the half bath, the handle is just a push to open and then pull towards you. That opens it. And as we go into the bathroom straight in, the two cabinet doors here open into the electrical compartment. Inside this compartment are your breakers and fuses. The breakers here and here are for your 120 volt appliances and then your fuses here for your 12 volt appliances. So if we open this up, you'll be able to see this is your 120 volt breakers. The main breaker has to be on for these other ones to work. So make sure this one's on switched it's towards main towards the center and then you've got your engine block washer dryer freezer and all the ones on this side your inverters cooktops and you'll notice that they're all pointed towards the center and that's on if they trip that's just turned off and you just push it to turn on but if they actually trip in service it will actually it will show that it's about halfway in that case you have to push it all the way to the off and then back on again if if the breaker trips it won't actually be all the way off it'll be somewhere about in the mid or halfway position you'll have to push it off and then turn it back on none of these were tripped off I actually just turn them off and then back on. So when you see one that's tripped, it's not gonna be quite all the way to the left or all the way to the right. It'll be about halfway. Then you have to go all the way to the off or over to the outside and then back towards the center to turn it on. Beside your 120 volt breaker box, you have sub panels. These are also 120 volt breakers but they operate through the inverters. So when inverter one is turned on, these are the breakers that are live. When inverter two is turned on, these are the breakers that are live. These are your GFCI resettable circuits for your floor heat in zone one and floor heat in zone two. For each of the fuses, the label for that fuse is on a decal on the side of the door panel. On this side of the cabinets, you have a GFCI breaker here and a 120 volt outlet. And you have your medicine cabinet here with more storage. Sink, on off, Dometic flush. On the Dometic panel, you have add water to the bowl or flush and you have two LED lights. The power light tells you that the switch is powered up and you can operate it. The tank level has two indicator lights where this will come on and show amber. If you're 75% full on your tank, you can still flush the toilet then, but if it shows red LED, then your black tank is full and you won't be able to flush. So you'll need to empty your black tank first and then you'll be able to flush. Below that, you've got more storage here and here. There is a panel here for your lighting. If you press your home screen, you've got all of the other controls that are on all of the other locations in the coach for your shade, fans, systems, and monitor panel. To operate your bathroom shades, you have the controls here for the shades here in the half bath. Above on the ceiling, you've got your fantastic vent. That vent can be turned on here with that touch panel, or again, you can remove this louver and you can open it manually. This louver is for the HVAC system 
and of course your lighting above. So as you enter the bedroom, you've got your pocket door here that you can close for, uh, for privacy. The door is locked for travel in this position. To unlock it and close it, just push down. That unlocks the door, then you can pull it over. Now you can close the door and it locks in that position. To open the door, just push down again, it unlocks it. And when you push it all the way to the end, it relocks into position. This is the sensor for the rear, rear of the coach for zone, the rear zone. There's a nightstand here, and on the inside is a 120 volt outlet plug. You have your lighting, storage. On the back wall is another 120 volt outlet there. You have your nightstand here with 120 volt outlet. There is an opening here so that you can plug things through here into the outlet without opening the door. There's storage below the stand. Underneath the bed is additional storage. If you just lift the bed up, you can see this is, uh, this is where you have your, your chairs for the dining room and for your table extensions. Above the bed, you have another zone with filters. The same magnetic strips hold it in place. So when it comes time to clean the filters in the bedroom, you'll have to come back here around, reach up and remove your filter out here. And then once you've cleaned it, you'll put it back. On the ceiling in the bedroom, you have your CO2 detector. You can test it just by pressing the center button and holding it up. You'll get the audible sound and the tones tell you that the battery is working. There's a small LED light. The LED light will also blink intermittently to tell you the batteries are good. If you don't get the tone or you don't see the LED light, you'll need to replace the batteries or check to make sure they're installed. You can just remove the nine volt battery here and then replace it. At the head of the bed, as you're laying down, you'll see additional controls that you can reach for your speakers. The speakers are turned on at the front radio. You can turn the speakers on here if the radios in house mode so you have music in the back and of course you have your touch panel here you can control all of your lighting and shades here in the bedroom or in the rest of the areas of the coach there's an additional opening here that you can put your cpap uh, lines through here up into this compartment helps keep everything out of your way so the hose would come down here so you can see there's another touch panel here. This is the same control that you have near the half bath. It's just a smaller size control, but it does everything that the larger one, larger panel does. It's just a secondary control here in your bedroom. Above that, you have your slide out control and your awning control for extend and retract. You have to push and hold whether it's in or out for your slide out to operate. And then once the slide room is all the way out or in, you just release the button. The awning switch is for your bedroom window awning. You have additional storage here. And 
This cabinet is another audio visual cabinet. It has 120 volt hookups here and it has HDMI plug here. So you can uh, connect another uh, either satellite receiver or DVD here. The interior lights are magnetically operated so when you close the door, the lights go out. There's a decal here inside the closet with all of your appliances model and serial number. So if you want to see which model of appliance you have either on the roof AC or the refrigerator or any other appliance in the coach, they're all listed here. So if you ever needed to replace one or see what the model is for the part number, that's all here. So as we're moving into the rear bathroom, there's another pocket door here. It unlocks the same way. Pull down and push, and it locks back in place here. To unlock and open it, you have to push down again and then open. And when it's all the way open, you want to make sure that it's pushed far enough so that it locks back in place. You can hear it lock, and you want to have it locked in the open position for travel. Moving into the bathroom shower, you have a lock on the shower here. You have to rotate that to get it out of your way to open the shower. There's magnetic strips here that keep it closed, but for travel, you want to make sure it's locked. Moving into the shower to have hot water that you don't want to waste water out of your fresh tank before it gets hot and just go down the drain into the gray tank, Numar installs an aquamizer. An aquamizer can be turned on at your touch panel. So if you go to your touch panel and go to systems, you'll see water pump and aquamizer. So if you touch the aquamizer button, it goes red. That means your aquamizer is on and the aquamizer indicator light is on, it's blue. And if I open the door here of the shower, you'll notice that this is gonna be blue until I turn this over to the recirculation button. This is diverting the water that comes into the shower going back into the fresh tank, but it's going through the sensor. And once this turns red, that means you have hot water. Once you have hot water, you'll turn the diverter back to the left, and then you can turn your shower on either the hose here or the shower above just by turning this handle up or down. And then you'll also be able to control the temperature here. When you're done with your shower, you can go back and turn the aquamizer off. Go back to systems and then press the aquamizer button and the light will go out. If you need to refer to how to operate the aquamizer, you can look on the back of this brochure and the instructions are here on the left. And keep in mind that if this diverter is set to recirculate and you're on city water, it will continue to allow water to go into the fresh tank. So that may overflow your fresh tank. So just remember, you wanna leave this in the off position if you're either winterizing the coach or you're on city water. There is a fold down seat in the shower if you'd like to use that, it folds down and then back up. Just push it back all the way to make it stay in the up position. Inside the shower are your dispensers for your shampoo, soap, and conditioner. Once you're finished with your shower and you close your door, 
you want to make sure to lock that door so you don't forget to lock it before you travel. Just to the left of the shower, you have more storage. On the back wall, you'll notice that you have a safe and you have your lighting control panel. There's an additional Wi-Fi router from Starlink. It's ready for use. It's not plugged in yet. You can plug it in. At the sink, we have the cabinets with a 120 volt outlet. Pull up is on, cold and hot. There's additional drawers here, cabinet there. At the floor, you'll notice there are caps. These caps cover screws that hold down this engine cover. To access the engine, this cover would have to be removed after this panel was taken off. So this panel can be removed, and this is the engine cover to access for service. This cabinet is for your washer and dryer. To operate the washer and dryer, the instructions are in your owner's operator's manual. There's temperature settings, time settings for your dryer. And of course, this is for different settings for wash. There is a notice here. It's important to make sure that in the water compartment bay outside that you open the valve for the gray drain tank while you're using or washing clothes. That makes sure that the water that goes in has a way out and doesn't completely fill the gray tank and doesn't overflow the gray tank. The shade is controlled with the wall control because it's an electric shade. The Dometic flush control is here. It's the same control in the half bath. You can fill the water up in the bowl with this one and you flush with this one. Same indicator light for 75% full is amber and red is 100% full. If you see the red light, you won't be able to flush. This is your emergency exit door. So we're going to show you how to open this door, unlock, and then unlock this one, and you'll be able to open. After the door is open, you can remove this panel, and you'll see a, a ladder that's stored inside the door. To open the ladder to escape, you would just reach down Loosen the Velcro and then just let the ladder fold down and it extends all the way to the ground so you can exit. If you exit and you need to store it back in the coach, just pull it up and fold it in and put the panel back in place. To store the ladder, just lift up, retract the ladder. When you close the rear emergency exit door, there are actually two lock positions when you close the door. If you close it too gently, you'll only go on the first lock. You can hear it's not fully closed, so just make sure when you close it that you pull it tight enough to go into the second lock. After you lock the door manually, you can set the door handle lock here. Just above that, you have your crank for the window. You can open that window and then close it.
There's additional cabinet storage space here and down below. Okay, so we've moved to the outside of the coach and starting in the driver's corner at the first compartment, we have our control for the generator slide. So if we open this door at the front of the compartment is a toggle switch. We can open the slide. And as we move into the slide, you can see that we have the ability to access headlight, turn signal components, windshield wiper, wash, and all of the other components here on the firewall. So we'll just kind of work our way over from this side towards the left. So what you'll see here is your street horns, wiper wash fill. You want to keep this full. This is your hot water spigot. So you, your hot water spigot is where you attach so that you can get hot water uh, to wash on, on the outside. In addition to this uh, spigot, you'll notice there's a drain hose attached to it. This drain hose has an on off valve here so you can drain that for winterizing. Then close it when you're done draining. This is your filter for your ITR Oasis. This needs to be changed annually. This is your own end generator. Your generator runs on, on diesel fuel. Your generator will only operate if you have at least a quarter tank of diesel in your uh, tank. Uh, it doesn't operate below that. So to make sure that you're gonna have power inside before you start it, you wanna make sure that this breaker is turned on or in the up position. If it's tripped, it might be down about halfway. You'll have to reset it off and make sure it's all the way up is on. The stripe up and down is on, zero is off. To start it manually, you would just use this and you'll see the light come on and it will flash. Once you're done using it, you can turn it off manually here. This is the meter that tells you how many hours are on the generator. And to service it, You've got your access panel here to access your filter and for service. These are your air horns here. Just above your generator, you have your HVAC system for the cockpit heating and cooling. The amount of refrigerant charge is listed here on a tag in case you ever need to recharge your system with refrigerant. On the passenger side, just beside the generator, this is your HWH system. This is the HWH pump and all of the solenoids here that operate your jacks and your uh, fluid manifold indicator lights. This is the system that for any hydraulic operations in your coach, this is the heart of that system. There's a reservoir tank here and you should check that fluid level by removing this cap on the back side. And it has a little mark. The jacks should be up and the slide outs in the out position to make sure that you have the upper level filled with fluid. After you check that and you're good, you can put that back. In the event that the, the generator slide might need to be opened manually or closed manually. You can do that by pushing these paddles in the, in the down position, and then you can actually push the generator slide in manually. After that, you'd have to reach up and then open them again and that would lock it back into place. But that's just in case you had an issue where it wouldn't move. You can do it manually if you had to. 
to close the generator slide, this is the rocker switch for open and close. Just press down. And continue to hold the generator slide. You can see the slide moves in, and then release when it's closed. You'll notice here in the center of the windshield is your mobile eye for lane warning and detection that displays on your glass dash. Your camera in the front, along with your marker lights on the top, high and low beam, turn signal, and fog light. Your fog lights will go off if you're using your bright lights. When you turn your bright lights off, then your fog lights will come back on if you're using them. Moving over to the corner of the passenger side of the coach, you can make mirror adjustments here by loosening these Allen head screws and then you can rotate or tilt the mirror. You can also make adjustments to the whole arm back and forth by taking the cap off here and then loosening the nut and then make your adjustments and then you can retighten that. At the, at the corner on the front passenger side, you've got your lane detection system so that if there's something in your blind spot that's going to show up on your triangular upper mirror as a warning light. So this should always be clear and clean. Just above that, you have your flag pole accessory. On some coaches, it is an option. On some, it's standard. At the entrance door, you have your steps. The steps open when the door is opened unless you use the step override switch inside. So if I open the door, the steps will come open. If I want the steps to stay open when I close the door, I have to go in in the overhead above the driver's seat and press the step override button. And I'll do that to show you. So I turn the step override on. So now when I close the door, the steps will stay open. Above the door, you have your door awning. The door awning can be operated manually in case of emergency. It can be open or closed, but the switch to operate the door awning open and closed is in the overhead. So I'll demonstrate how to open it manually or close it manually. So that opens it and this closes it. Just below the door awning, you have your patio light. Patio light switch is just inside the door. You have your handle for lock and unlock for the coach. When you get your coach, it has a simple five number unlock. One, two, three, four, four, one is unlock. The bottom button is your doorbell. If I close the door and I want to lock, I would just press and hold down the number one and that will lock the door. You can hear it lock the baggage compartments at the same time. The lock and unlock for the door can be controlled not only from the handle, but from your remote key fob. You can see the icons here for the door lock and unlock and for your baggage compartment, lock and unlock. So if I press the unlock, you can see it unlocks the door. If I press the unlock for the baggage compartments, you can hear those unlock. If I want to manually lock the door from the inside, the door handle lock is this one, lock and unlock. And if I want to manually lock the deadbolt here, then I just turn it clockwise to lock the deadbolt 
and counterclockwise to unlock it. For the deadbolt, the key fob doesn't lock and unlock the deadbolt. It can only be locked or unlocked from the inside at this position switch for lock and unlock. And then you can use the key on the outside to lock and unlock the deadbolt. To close the screen door independent of the main door, you can just push down on this lever and that releases the screen door to close. That locks it and then you can move the slider over. From the inside, you can push down on the inside handle and that pushes down this lever and that unlocks the screen door and then you can open it. And then just push it all the way to the door to relock it. You'll notice that there are runners on both sides of a screen that can be pulled down. So if I want this, this door to be closed and I want a full screen, I would need to open that screen first, pull it down, and then take my button to lock. So when I close my entrance door, there's two latches for closing. One is a soft close that you can use when you're parked so you don't slam the door and wake somebody up. It's just soft closes this way. And the door is closed, but it's not in the second latch. So it is closed, but if you're going to drive, you want to make sure and close it firmly so it goes into the second latch. So that would be firm like this. Now you can see it's flush and you won't have any wind noise when you're driving. So again, first latch is soft close and that's okay for driving. You wanna go in firmly to the second latch. So when you operate your coach daily, you should release the moisture buildup in your air system. And to do that, you'll have to look towards the front of the wheel, back towards the frame rail. You'll see three lanyards. The three lanyards have a loop on each one. What you do is you find the one that is the silver one, which drains the tank, and you pull that one first and then you pull the other two. So I'll demonstrate that. You could use your manual retract awning rod, grab a hold of the silver one and pull it, and you can hear it release the air along with the moisture. Then you would want to grab a hold of the other two and release both of those every day that you're driving your coach and it's in use, that just keeps the moisture out of your air system. To operate your Girard awnings, door awning, or main patio awnings, you have your remote here, and you can select the channels for each awning. If you select the zero, all of the awnings open and close at the same time. If you select the channel one, that's the first main awning, channel two is the second, and number three is the door awning. So you can select them individually or all of them with the zero as your channel. And then all you need to do is press the out, stop, or in. So if I press with the set at zero and I press out, all of the awnings will come out at the same time. They'll extend all of the way and they'll come to a stop by themselves. Each one of the awnings has an LED light strip. Each of the light strips can be turned on individually by going to the channel or just pressing the LED light switch to high or the H all of the light strips or LEDs will come on on all three of the awnings. To turn the LEDs off, just press that light switch again and all of the LEDs go out. 
when I'm done with the awnings and I want to retract them all, just go back to zero and press in and they'll all go in. If I want to stop any time as they're going in, I could press the stop button if I wanted to adjust the awnings so that they weren't all the way out. Press it again towards the end and they'll continue to go in. You'll notice the motors um, at the very top of the awning with the white cord going into the end of the motor have set screws that are white and red. Those screws are the settings for the amount of extension and retraction of the awning. So if we need to make any adjustments to the distance of travel for the awning going out or how much they close, we can make those adjustments right there at the motor. In addition to that, there is a rod that comes in your coach. And this rod is the rod that can be used to insert at the top of the awning. There's a small plug that you remove this inserts, and then as you rotate this rod clockwise or counterclockwise, you can manually retract either awning. You have to do one at a time. So insert, and as you turn this, you can retract the awning in case you have an issue with power or a motor failure. You can still retract the awning and get to your destination. Moving back, we have our fuel fill door. This is where you put your diesel fuel, whether you're filling the tank from this side or the driver's side, it's filling the same tank. So you can fill from either side. It's your docking light and your marker lights. Our first baggage door, we have the basement freezer. Above the basement freezer, we have the accessories for your airline that you can plug into the front airlines of coach if you need to have uh, any inflatables or tires need to be filled. This plugs into the coach air system and you would need to have your coach aired up in order to use that. We have two long threaded rods. You'll need to refer to your owner's manual. These rods can be used to manually retract your HWH full wall slide in the event that the full wall slide would need to be retracted because of some kind of pump failure or failure of one of the cylinders. The basement freezer can be accessed by pulling this tray out. The freezer is split into two sections and each one of these sections uh, can be controlled at the side here, on off switch. It's also Bluetooth compatible. You can connect to this, refer to your owner's manual, how you would connect to that via your phone or smart device. And for uh, setting cold temperatures for refrigerated or freezing temperatures. There's two sources of power supply for this basement freezer. 110 volt or 100 or 120 volt or 12 volt. This is your 12 volt plug here and 120 volt plug is here. So when the coach is not plugged into 120 volt or you don't have your generator on, you can still have it plugged in here and it will operate off of the 12 volt system. You can leave them both plugged in at the same time and the freezer selects whichever power source is available. In our next baggage door back, we have a power slide tray with the control here at the front. So opening, opening it down, just hold that switch down. Numar provides you with extra tile 
in case you might need to replace a tile inside the coach. Those tile are the same lot number, so they'll match in color. You'll notice here this switch is for your lights. It's a magnetic switch, so when this side of the switch gets close to this one, it turns the lights off that come on automatically. To close the tray, we just push the switch in the other direction. It stops automatically. You'll notice an ABS cover here. This cover is the access point for the motor for the slide to go in and out. This door is your outside entertainment center. The entertainment center is locked and the gray key that you have here is the unlock. Just rotate it vertically to unlock and then lift up. That opens your entertainment center. The television will telescope out and rotate. So you just grab a hold of it and pull out. And once you get it in the out position, you can move it around in the direction that you want. When you're done, you can stow it back in place. And this is gonna stay right there. There's a bow speaker here that you can choose, uh, make the selection here for either dash radio or television. The center position is off. So if I make the selection to the TV, that TV then will sound through the Bose speaker. If I use the dash radio, I'll remember I have to put the dash radio in house mode to hear the radio outside here. We have another outlet here, 120 volt if you need it. USB charger. And it has two USB chargers as well. When I'm done with this compartment, I just reach up and close it and then lock it. In our next compartment door back, we have your intervac system. We have your intervac accessories and bag. You'll see additional controls starting at the right. That's your hydraulic cylinder to extend and retract your HWH full wall slide. It's called a sink cylinder. We have your camera system here with all your cameras labeled at the bottom. We have your slide room controller here, your tile heat controller here, and this is another controller for the slide in the bedroom. There's an additional outlet here, 120 volt. And here, this one goes to the inner vac over here. If you look on the back wall, you'll see additional controls for your electronics at the back wall. Across, you'll notice the ITR Oasis. The intervac system can be turned on manually or turned off manually here. And the bag, the bag can be changed by removing it and replacing it here. If you'd like to operate your accessories, you can plug them in here manually and close when you're finished if you need to sweep in the exterior area here. In the event that you go to open your door and it's locked and it doesn't unlock with the switches on the inside or your key fob, you can use your key and unlock it this way or you can lock it manually here if it doesn't lock. So either way, you've got your key as a backup. There's another marker light, docking light, and the sensor for your lane warning. This is your pegboard compartment, storage, tools, or any other accessories you can store here. This is your bedroom slide. At the top of each of our slides is a, uh, another awning that opens and closes with the wall as it extends. So when that room is open, it's covered with a canopy from that awning. 
whenever that's open, we want to make sure there's nothing um, on the between the awning fabric and the roof before we close it. So just do a walk around your coach when the room is open. Make sure there's nothing uh, underneath that before you travel and close your awnings because you don't want anything to get caught in there when it retracts. If you look in between the wheels, you'll see your jack. That's your HWH jack. You want to make sure before you travel that the jack is completely retracted. In that position is retract. This is your emergency exit door, and we covered that a little earlier in the video. This door is for your DEF and for manually uh, operating or adding air to the left front, right front, left rear, or right rear bags. In our last compartment on the passenger side, you've got your chassis batteries. Your chassis batteries only supply power to the coach when it's turned on here. So right now, the chassis batteries are connected to the coach because both of these are in the on position. If we're going to store the coach, we want to make sure that these are off. You'll notice at the base of this disconnect, there is a hole on both sides, so this can be locked. So you could put a padlock on this if you were, or the mechanic was working on the engine and he didn't want any power to be going to the ignition. This one could be locked. And it's locked in the off position. These are some of your chassis fuses. To access them and see which ones are in this location, we just rotate to the left or counterclockwise, and we can remove that. And on the back side, all of the fuses and relays, the relays are the ones that are the square black ones, are, are labeled here. So if you have a system in your coach that's not working, for instance, uh, the ABS uh, warning light isn't working, that's F12, then we could go to the F12 location pull the fuse out and check it. If we need to replace it, there's extra fuses here. The way you remove the fuse is there's a little device here to reach in and grab the fuse. When you're done, you can put this back and then close this, put it on, and turn it clockwise to lock. There's an additional fuse at the top here. It's labeled. It's your seven and a half amp solar fuse for the solar panel on the roof. And these are your filters for your engine fuel and air dryer, air dryer fuel. So we're demonstrating the marker lights now, turn signals left and right. And we'll demonstrate reverse. So we just demonstrated the exterior lights and you want to check your lighting before you travel. Make sure all your marker lights, turn signals and brake lights are working. 
your connections for your towing are down below here. This is for towing automotive Air Force One type air systems. And this is for your trailer connection. Just above that, we have your release for your rear access to the engine. If we come in here, we can see starting from this side is our engine coolant. Engine coolant level uh, should be seen in the glass here as a red solution. Make sure you see that. Auxiliary air connection. If you need to fill it, make sure that the engine is cool, cooled down completely before you open this. Check your engine be oil level before you start your engine. If you start your engine and it's warm, uh, you won't have an accurate reading on your oil level. This is the engine oil fill. And to check the engine level, here's your dipstick here. This is your hydraulic oil for your system. Fill is here. The dipstick is on that stem. So when you turn that open, you'll be able to see your level. You can check your belt just visually, making sure your belts are not cracked or worn. Your transmission fluid level can be checked here. And fill. This is the, at the center, at the top here, this can be open. And when this is plugged in, you can have your engine preheated by the block heater here. Make sure that's plugged in if you want that to work. You can turn your block heater on at the Silverleaf panel. This gauge tells you if this air filter needs to be replaced. The yellow level, as long as it's in the green when the engine's running is good, your air filter is good. If the yellow level goes up into the red, you'll need to change that air filter. There's a fill cap here. You can open this to fill your hydronic heating system. The hydronic heating system is separate from your engine. This is the, the solution called Century Fluid that you need to add for your Oasis ITR. It is available from your Newmar Parts Department. When you're done with this compartment, you just grab a hold of here, come down, and push to close. At the top corner of your rear cap on the driver's side, you, you'll see a screen area. That's where the air intake goes for your engine. So you wanna make sure that that is free of any debris and clear so your engine has lots of air that can go into the filter. The same here for your condensers, for your engine cooling and transmission cooling. This area needs to be clear with no debris and clean. These are your uh, marker lights and uh, lane warning. This is your DEF fill on the driver's side. This is a storage compartment for your sewer hose. And just like we could see on the other side, your HWH jack, make sure that's fully retracted before you travel. This is the window awning that's controlled inside the bedroom. Above is another slide topper awning, which opens and closes with uh, the full wall slide when it's extended. You got another marker light here with docking light and another sensor here for your lane assist on this side of the coach. And our water bay compartment here. So at the water compartment bay, the first thing we want to do is get this out of our way since we're going to show you how to use this. We open this lower door compartment. We Put our hose through. And then we'd want to connect this to the sewer connection. 
Uh, when we make that connection, we want to make sure and remove this, put that in the sewer connection so that when we open our valves, we can drain the gray and the black tanks. Starting from the right side, you'll notice an A and B that goes to this hose. This is for winterizing. It's already been winterized in this case. You can see the winterizing solution is already in the hose. The directions on winterizing are listed here. It goes through each step that you need to make. In addition to that, when you turn the water pump on, you wanna make sure that this screen here is clean. If it's not, you can rotate it and remove this cap cover, take the screen out and clean the screen if you're having any difficulty with getting water or the winterizing solution through the pump. That's your screen you'll wanna check. Just to the side of that is a temperature sensor. Inside of this compartment, it needs to stay warm when you're using the coach and you have water in the system or in your tank. You don't want it to freeze. So Numar puts this temperature sensor to allow the heat to come on. There is a heat, uh, a heating fan back. You can't see it here, but when this reaches about 37 to 40 degrees, the heat comes on in this bay to keep everything from freezing. You have to have your ITR Oasis on if you want heat in this compartment. So the burner for your ITR Oasis needs to be on, not just the heating elements for your ITR Oasis. So that's how you winterize. Check your screen to make sure the filtration going into the pump is good. This is your water pump here. The low point drain is labeled here. If you need to drain your low point drain, that's right here. You can open and close the handle. That's open. Open that way, close this way. That's for the fresh tank. And that is for your fresh tank water drain, for your water tank. You can see the fresh water tank right here. The canister for the whole house filter can be removed with the filter wrench that comes in your coach. You just rotate this, remove this, and then you would install the filter and then tighten it back on. If you're going to winterize the coach, you want to take this out first so you don't contaminate it with the winterizing solution. We have two caps that cover the gray tank rinse and the black tank rinse. So we can insert a hose type connection into either one of these when we want to rinse either the gray tank or the black tank. You want to keep those tanks clean. When water goes in here, it sprays into the insides of the tank and rinses those tanks and the effluent comes out here and that keeps the tank clean so you don't get a lot of buildup on those tank walls. The black tank rinse low point drain, so after you've rinsed either one of these, the water that goes in those lines, you can open these up and that drains those lines so you don't have an issue if you're winterizing. You wanna open both of those, drain those, and then close them before you winterize. In addition to closing these, if you want to leave them open before you make your hose disconnect, that will keep it from having pressure here that might spray you. This is the on-off switch for the RV SantaCon. The RV SantaCon has a motor. When the motor is turned on, it pressurizes or forces the effluent out of this hose. So before you turn that on, you wanna make sure the cap is removed from the end that you put into the sewer and that this handle is pulled towards you so that when the pump is turned on, 
the effluent will come out here. After you pull the handle towards you to open up the hose for the SantaCon, we recommend draining the sewage tank first, and that handle is right here. So you'd pull this one. Now that both handles are open, you would turn your SantaCon on, and that would drain the sewage tank. When you're done, turn it off and close the sewage tank. And next, you would open up the gray tank and turn the SantaCon back on to drain the gray tank. When you're done, turn it off, close the gray tank, and then you can close the SantaCon. You're done draining now. If you wish to rinse at this point, it would be a good time to use either the black or gray tank rinse or both. When you're done, put your caps back on. In the center of your panel, you have a home screen where you can view the level, fresh, black, and gray. You also have the water selection for water pump or autofill. Lights selection, you can turn on the, uh, on the security, on the driver's side or security lights on the passenger side. And then the bottom selection, the last one, is for the manual start, manual stop for your generator. Back to your home screen. You can also dim the screen here if you'd like. Just hit the dim and then back on is bright. Just below your touch panel screen, you've got your auto tank fill selection city selection or manual tank fill and this is for your wa fresh water supply so if we want to fill or have fresh water in the coach we'll need to pull our hose out connect it to the water source and then we need to make a selection if we're going to fill our tank or our fresh water tank or if we're just going to use the city supply or if we want the auto tank fill and auto city supply. This is a manual selection, and if you choose the manual selection, which is in now, you'll have to watch and make sure that when the tank is full here, that you turn the water to one of the other selections so that water doesn't overfill and come out the bottom of your coach. So if I want to rotate that to city, the city supply will just supply water in the coach. It won't fill manually or the automatic. Wa water or automatic water tank. If I want to automatically have the tank fill on and the city supply, I would go to the selection at the top. And then you have to enable it. If you choose the auto tank fill, auto city fill, you'll have to enable that selection on your silver, silver leaf panel inside. You can go here, you can, you can select auto fill here, on off, and top off if you like. At the top here, there's a paper towel holder. There's no paper towels in here now. There's a shower uh, here in case you need to clean any of the accessories or your wash. You can just pull this up and then turn on the water, hot or cold, rinse off whatever you need, put that back. The low point drains here are referred to in the winterizing section. If we need to either drain the cold water or the hot water lines, we can do that here just by opening. After we've drained them, we can close. This hose, when we're ready to retract it, has an electric motor to help us retract. We just push that down to retract. Put our cap back on. Want to make sure there's a little notation here that the maximum pressure that we're allowing for our water pressure is not over 60 PSI.
If your water supply exceeds 60 PSI, you'd want to put a regulator here or in line so we don't go over 60 PSI. The other selection that you could make, if you had the larger hose to connect here and go out, then you would not use the SantaCon, but you would put the larger hose out here and then the effluent would come through here when either you opened your black or your gray tank. You would open that and then you would open this gate valve and you could drain the tank through the larger hose instead of having it going through the macerator. So when you've removed your connection on the outside sewer and put your cap back in place, you need to stow the hose. You can lift it up through here and pull your hose up and then put our cap back on. So in front of our water bay compartment, we have our cord reel compartment here. So to make our connection to our cord reel, we want to pull this out. And we want to put our cord here so we can close the door. If you look at the back of the cord rail compartment, there's a cover. That ABS cover can be removed. There's Velcro on this side and the left side. Once the Velcro is loose, you can take this panel and pull it aside. And all of the fuses, electrical, fuses on the 12 volt side are labeled here. So if we have any appliance that's not working, we can come back here, whether it's the dash radio, cockpit lights, hydronic heat fans, or any of the ones that are labeled here, we can go to that fuse label. It's numbered here and we can pull that fuse out and check it. If it's blown, we would need to replace that fuse. This one and the couple down here are resettable. If they need to be reset, you just push in and release, and that will reset those fuses. On the upper right corner here, we've got our battery disconnect, which disconnects the house batteries, and we have our charge bridge. Our charge bridge connects the house batteries to the chassis batteries. There's a fuse here that is the chassis voltage fuse. It's a five amp fuse. To check that one, you'd have to open this up. In the event that you're not getting your charge bridge to connect, you can check that fuse. This control box connects either your generator to your inside power or connects the cord reel. It selects the generator as priority. So if you're running your generator, that generator power comes through this box and goes into your house. If the generator's off, it selects the cord reel as the power that goes into your house. It's all automatic. This automatic transfer switch also protects against high or low voltage or spikes in voltage. If it senses low voltage, it disconnects. Those voltage readings that it sees are displayed here. If there's a fault or any voltage reading issue, they always read out here, gives you line voltages and or faults. In addition to this display, there are two red lights that are on right here constantly. If there is a flashing of those red lights here, those red lights are giving you a warning. You can refer to your owner's manual for the pattern of flashing lights. It will give you the issue. At this compartment, if you open it, is your cable connection for part cable. If you have your park cable connected, you want to make sure your air TV antenna is turned off so you can get the signal coming through that line. To retract your power cord, you want to grab a hold of here 
and remove it and then hold it out here and push the retract and feed it in. Once we've got it in the side, we can close our door. Our next compartment forward is the ITR Oasis. The ITR Oasis is your hydronic heat. The hydronic heat heats your water and it heats the air in the coach. The power button here has to be turned on. The green light for the power has to be on and then you can turn the system on in your panel for the silver leaf. These LED lights display green on the top and the ones near the bottom are displaying a red LED if there's a fault. In addition to this panel and the LED lights displaying here, if there's any faults in the silver box, they would also display red. The sh these lights in the silver box are green when they're on, but if they're, if they're red, that means that you have a fault on that circuit and those circuits are labeled. In the event that you turned your panel on with the silver leaf control panel inside and it didn't work, Numar gives you an additional panel that's in bubble wrap here. This panel can be connected directly to the silver panel and you can operate it manually with that panel in case it won't work with the electronic controls. The small window here is to your burner. So when the flame is on, you'll be able to look through here and you'll see an orange flame that's burning. This is a reset button. If you have a failure, you may hit that reset button. If that doesn't reset the fault, you'll need to have your unit serviced. In our next compartment forward, we have another easy glide tray. We can open. This is the same one that can open the opposite direction on the other side. We can open it this way. And then close. If you look up near the top of this compartment area, you'll see a shutoff T-handle. That can be closed if you need to drain the water line that supplies the hot spigot at the front firewall. So once that's closed, you can drain the one in the front if you need to winterize. There's an additional shutoff here for fresh water supply that goes through the slide out that is heated, but if we need to turn that off, we can just turn this vertically. That shuts this water line off for the water supply to the kitchen. And this direction is on. In our next compartment forward, we have our lithium batteries, our BMS, and our inverters. The lithium battery reset is in your overhead. Those are the blue circular LED lights. As long as the BMS is turned on and operating, you'll get a solid blue LED light in your front overhead at the driver's position. If it's flashing, it needs to be turned on to be reset. It needs to be solid blue to be on. Once the BMS is on, then you'll have these batteries powering up your coach. These are your house batteries. The inverters are both for charging your batteries and for supplying power to your kitchen. So you'll have power coming through 12 volt. This inverts it and it gives you 120 volt power through your sub panel in your kitchen. If you see a fault light on the right hand side on either one of these, you can 
reset that fault right here by pressing and holding the button down. If for some reason it doesn't say inverter enabled here on the left hand side, you can press this button and that will turn it back on and enable the inverter. The inverter has to be enabled with the green light on in order for it to charge or give you inverted power from the batteries into your sub panels for 120 volt operation of your appliances. If you have any question on how the routing goes for the power supplies to the batteries or inverters, it's all on a house battery printout on the back wall. The inverters can be turned on and off or enabled at the house silverleaf panel, but if you need to check if they won't turn on from that panel, you can come out here and make sure they're not in a fault. If you clear the fault, then you should be able to turn them on from the inside. If not, of course, try it from the outside here with the green button to enable it. This is your docking light here, marker light and fuel door. This fuel supply is going into the same tank as the opposite side. Moving forward to the front compartment on the driver's side, we have our cockpit fuses here. These cockpit fuses and those controls are all labeled. So each one above each one of these fuses, there's a name. If any one of those red LED lights between the fuses comes on, that red LED light is an indication that that fuse is blown. If the fuse is blown, grab a hold of it, pull it out, and come over here and choose the correct size to replace that fuse. Again, these are all your cockpit fuses. Just below that, these are the fuses and relays for the operation of the chassis chassis fuses are labeled on the back side of this panel so if we loosen this panel and rotate it around you can see these are all the chassis fuses for instance if your your heat on the seat wasn't working you could go to f23 here find f23 remove that fuse if it needs to be replaced, choose the right size, replace the fuse. How are you going to pull those fuses out? Here's the small device that you grab a hold, pull it out, pull the fuse, and reinsert a new one. When you're done, put this back. There is a brush here for your windshield cleaning if you need it. This is the living room junction box for the floor heat. There's an additional fuse here, a five amp. The HWH front generator slide control, we saw this earlier, that is extend and retract. And these are the connections that come in from the battery at the chassis. 